So today we're going to cover an important concept for anyone who's getting into drone mapping, which is ground sample distance or GSD for short. GSD is a way to define the level of detail in each picture that's taken relative to the ground that you're photographing. It's generally measured in centimeters per pixel, but it can be inches per pixel. And that's to say that each pixel on a camera sensor, each little dot, relates to a certain amount of area coverage on the ground. For example, a GSD of one centimeter per pixel means that each pixel in the photo represents one square centimeter on the ground. One way to think of this is like scale on a map. Like golf, a lower score is better, so a GSD of one has more detail than a GSD of five. There are three components that define the GSD. Camera resolution, a higher resolution camera has more pixels and so captures more detail, thereby lowering the GSD. The type of lens and its field of view also influences the GSD by affecting how much of the ground area is captured in a single image. A longer lens captures more detail from a higher altitude, whereas a fisheye lens might capture a much wider area. And the altitude of the drone. The lower you fly, the more detail will be in your pictures and the lower your GSD score will be. With most drones, the sensor size and field of view are fixed, which means the only real way to change the GSD is to change the altitude. So if a lower GSD has more detail, why not always just fly lower and produce a higher quality image? Well, it really depends on your use case. Let's look at what happens when you lower your GSD. Here you can see an image of the drone with an outline showing the area on the ground that will be captured by a Mavic 3 Enterprise at 400 feet. Now let's look at the same thing, but with the drone at 50 feet. As you can see, we're covering a much smaller area per picture. This means that to complete a map, you need to take a lot more pictures. To demonstrate the real world effects, I've created a dummy map covering 100 acres. If I fly that at 400 feet using a Mavic 3 Enterprise, the drone will travel around 33 miles per hour and take just 10 minutes to complete the project using just under 300 photos. But if I change that to 50 feet, the time jumps to almost two hours and the number of photos needed increases to 9,500. There are a couple of reasons for such a big increase. First, when you fly lower, you need to add more lines to achieve the same overlap as you can see here. Not only that, but when you fly lower, you increase the risk of motion blur and you'll have to fly slower to reduce the chances of that. In our case, the speed drops to just 14 mile per hour. These two factors combine to significantly increase the time on site and the number of photos taken. And even after the flight has finished, all those extra photos are going to cost you a lot more time and money to process. So like most things in life, there's a compromise to be made. Are you looking for the best detail regardless of the time, or are you looking to capture something that is good enough? As a general rule, for mapping and surveys, a low GSD is essential for detailed maps and measurements, such as for construction or agriculture. But for more general photography, a high GSD might suffice. For example, if capturing general landscapes or a large area where you're just using it for project planning purposes. I was recently doing some highly detailed mapping of a roof to analyze it for hail damage. And in that case, we were just 10 feet off the roof and had a GSD of just 0.09 centimeters per pixel. But I also have a regular construction job where the site is 400 acres, and we cover that every two weeks. So keeping processing of that to a minimum is essential. In that case, the client is only looking for general information about the site. And so we have a GSD value there of 3.25, which significantly reduces the time on site and processing time. How you adjust the GSD really depends a lot on the software you're using. For example, Pilot 2 has a GSD field and you can directly enter the number you want and it will figure everything else out for you. Whereas software like DroneLink and DroneDeploy just display a value based on the settings that you've made from the adjustments 
you put in elsewhere. But that's it really. Consider your client needs, base your GSD on that and you should be good to go. Before we close out, I did want to point out that while the G in GSD stands for ground, it's really the target distance that's important. Often the ground and the target are the same, so it doesn't matter. But this really kicks in when doing things like mapping a roof, where the roof and the ground distance can be quite different. That however is a discussion for a future video where I will be talking about ensuring you have the correct overlaps based on the height of the thing that you're capturing. Anyway, that's it for another video. As always, I hope you found it useful. Please do like and subscribe as it helps YouTube recommend me to other people. And I will see you in the next video.